This live presentation was produced in Ashland, Oregon by the Rogue Valley Metaphysical Library and Event Center. RVML relies on the support of our volunteers, members, and donors to organize and present these programs. For more information about this presentation or to borrow, download, or purchase other recordings from our catalog, please visit our website at rvml.org. Welcome. Can you <laughs> probably don't even need a mic with this group, but thank you so much for coming out in this um, rather nasty storm. And uh, kind of maybe pretend that you're walking into a sauna bath, because this is about the way it felt <laughs> in Bali. So we are going to give you kind of an experience of visual and auditory and texture, you know, out there, and even even smell some wonderful things. We brought some spices, so it's going to be a full sensory experience. And I would like to honor Margot. She wrote some exquisite poetry for her experience, and she's going to go ahead and share that now. And I attempted to put kind of a slideshow with it, kind of go along with a little bit of the experience of what she was talking about. The timing may not be quite right, um, and just kind of remember and you'll get a sense, but really don't let the pictures take away from, I want you to make sure that you really hear the, you know, the poetry has been just wonderful and it's, I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, I got to really get, um, well familiar with the poetry because I was working with the pictures quite a bit trying to find pictures. The pictures came from all four of us and a couple other people too. One last thing I wanted to share is Heidi Hornberger. I would like, I'll, I'll share a little bit more. Um, should I go ahead and do that after before the school? She'll be showing up a little bit in both your mentioning and in the video. So I'll go ahead and say Heidi Hornberger is Margot's sister-in-law, her brother's partner. Yeah. Outlaw. Outlaw. <laughs> <laughs> she is a world-renowned um, sculpturist, artist, and she lives down in San Diego, or San Mill Valley, uh, Mill Valley mm -hmm. San Francisco area. She goes every year to Bali for about two months. And so last year in December, well, it was actually right after Thanksgiving, we went, Aaliyah and Margot and I went in December of 05. And Anne went with Heidi in December of 06. So she's sharing some of her experience of just this recent time and we're sharing also of ours so it's kind of a joint group and Heidi is the one that share I mean she knows everybody and it's really great to travel with her so I would like to at this time kind of just relax because this is going to be a really wonderful experience here I'd like to go ahead and, and give me a minute to get it started Weaving together, Bali, the colors, the breath, the spine, the inclusiveness. We were so cared for and protected. The offerings, constant beautiful reminders to offer back, to be in gratitude, to appreciate and notice the surrounding beauty. Our hosts wove a delicate mantle of safety, even through flooding streets, traffic, airports. We were on a blessed mission from day one until our arrival home. We walked in beauty, as beauty. 
I felt the blessings of the grandmothers around me, supporting me, being amused, entertained, giggling in contentment and well-being, as in no other place I've been on the planet. Ceremony. Just do a little bell. Ceremony and processions. How beautiful and elegant these lovely people are. On our first day, the whole main street in Ubud was filled with beautifully dressed women in kabaya and sarong, men also in temple garb, and the children beautifully turned out. Everyone moved in a long, graceful procession, flowing together in long lines, accompanied by gamelan musicians and by groups of young men carrying large images of frightening creatures some recognizable from the Hindu Ramayana, some uniquely Balinese. The sense of fun and teamwork was conveyed by their cheerful chanting and swaying of the creatures back and forth. Many village temples, dark temple? <laughs> On the second night in Bali, our room was quite dark and there were unfamiliar night sounds, a time to breathe deeply into myself, my belly, my point of refuge from the strange discomfort of the unknown. I scanned the body and went deeply into the belly, into breath and comfort noticing the skull, the spine, the bliss of energy, and Margot was gone, resting, leaving space for breath and the new colors, different colors than my familiar rose and sapphire blue. Here I am golden ochre, teal, blue, green, and purple. How unlike Margot. In this place, I am protected by the family of the Prince of Ubud. I am sheltered in Ibu Agung's compound next to the Lotus Pond. Yen is our guide, our excursion planner, our cheerful and vigilant guardian and driver. Yen takes us to temples in the jungle and by lakes and misty mountains. Wayen softly cues us to temple etiquette and carefully drives us wherever we choose. We meet his friends, the parasol maker, the ceremonial hat maker, the flute player, the petite artists, the wood carver storyteller, and my favorite, Tessa, the painter of beautiful wooden puppets and statues. Oh, Yen, your heart is so generous to include us so graciously. I don't just feel safe and cared for, I feel loved in this place of strange sounds and colors. My heart is activated expanded, made ready for the children and their families. The first rainy, muddy night, all decked out in kabaya and sarong, the rain pours down, puddling and swirling in the street, and yet it's all beautiful. The children in temple garb, the musicians, the barong, 
all beautiful and we're in it, wet and muddy and beautiful. <laughs> How is it when I looked at my temple garb the next day, there were no stains, no mud, no spots, though I had sat on my sandals on the wet temple floor for hours. How lovely, how delicious to experience a kind of holy perfection, like when YN drives an 88-inch wide SUV through a 90-inch space. No problem. Eyes wide open in knowing, in gratitude. I don't know which children get to dance, whether they choose or are chosen. I know that Ibu Agung began the women's gamelan about four years ago. They're amazing, playing as a shared consciousness with each other and the young dancers. Marilyn. Mm -hmm. We'll get to Marilyn, there's a beautiful one. Uh, the dancers, yeah. I can only surmise from my own witnessing and experience how the meditation, the music, the trance, the dance weave and blend, keeping the culture of the dance alive and vibrant. Marilyn, we met a lovely woman from the States who now lives in Bali. Marilyn, a good friend of our hostess, Ibu Agun. We were invited to her tooth filing ceremony. An important event in Bali is having one's canine teeth filed. To blunt them, the resulting even smile is considered less animalistic. And indeed, it does look very nice. What an honor to be included in such an event. Ah. We are at the children, the children. <laughs> a major focus of the trip was to meet and create a project with some Balinese children whose schooling we helped sponsor through the Humanitarian Foundation for Mother Earth. Our friend and planner of the project, Heidi Hornberger, had purchased a disposable camera for each child in order to facilitate their showing us and their other sponsors more about their lives. S supporting a child soothes me, helps me focus on the well-being and joy of children, of life. Through this gesture, I say yes to life. We travel to Bali with extra suitcases full of everything from mosquito repellent to books for expats glue sticks, Marby markers, bright paper and scissors, and 25 disposable cameras for our young student friends. Oh yeah, and we're going to get 46 blank books in Bali so that each child can make two books. Okie dokie, I'm an old kindergarten teacher. This is no big deal. When well, we have to do what? 4,000 little heart and flower stick-on doodads and shiny paper by when? and the heat and humidity in the room was bath time. So we cut and folded and messed with little cameras and ran around to shops finding glue and stickers. The children in the classroom in Bali behaved a little differently than children in my kindergarten class. They were very schooled in etiquette befitting the occasion, polite to a fault, but easy to be with. Many parents are also present on this very hot Saturday, here at our request, graciously cutting and pasting, and, oh my, didn't I just retire from this? <laughs> the books are wonderful because the photos are wonderful and the families are wonderful. We were so hot we just steamed on through amazed and amused at the loving patience and good humor of everyone, including ourselves. And something I, I always choke up on is that a district official who was there to see what we were up to 
said he would find funds for another 500 kids in our kids' district. So many children for so little on our part, unless you count the getting there and all that cutting and sweating. The children sang for us and showed us some of their games. And we sang a bit for them, at which I think they truly were astonished, but very polite. <laughs> I'm not really sure. It was a good thing. I'd do it again tomorrow. <laughs> uh, yeah, we've been looking for Made. Uh, okay. Sure. I think I can. Does that work? Oh, here's all our cutting and pasting. Yes, preparing. Okay. You're having some difficulty there. When it plugged up to this unit, it didn't want to act right. In the loop. There's Made. Mm -hmm. We just passed her. Yeah. This is Made, the second child in her family. I see her brow pucker in discomfort, a fleeting annoyance, frustration. I don't know what this child woman wants. Next year she'll be so different. And the next. Who are you, Made? What is your world becoming? Is this school something you want? Will it change your life? Surely not having it will. I offer this to you and your family, for you, for me, for all of us, an offering. Surely you understand offerings. Made's Compound. Visiting my sponsored child's home was a privilege and yet not easy. There were four of us large white women and Astrid, dear competent Astrid, our project liaison, roaring along on her scooter, talking with each parent, each <coughs> child, clear and focused. Thank you, Astrid. YN went with us, of course, easing our way and everyone's way with his innate graciousness and good humor. We were so hot and tired after the long morning. Seeing this, Made's dad scaled up a coconut tree and brought us each a fresh coconut with a straw in it to drink. His wife scurried off to a tiny neighborhood store to buy us bottled water. How dear, how thoughtful are these gentle people. We have Ruchina or did we lose Ruchina? Oh, I'm gonna skip on here. Our children are mostly children of artisans, at least the ones I met were. Their livelihood is tourist trade dependent. Kadek's family carve wooden statues. Anne's child's father carved the gods' chairs. The basic literacy, hygiene, and water purification is relevant, but many of the circumstances are different. So I'm lost in space here. <coughs> Here we go. This is um, YN's land. This is YN's land and Tini's village. Great. On one of our long day excursions, our driver and guide YN took us to see his land, of which he's very proud. We also visited his wife Tini's family and got more of a sense of how extended families live and work together. This particular family makes a sort of mobile or wind, wind chime for the tourist trade. They were charming and gracious to us. Wayen's land was in a jungly area and has several kinds of fruit trees, including coconuts. He's a good provider for his family and participates in both his and Tini's villages. I think there's another piece of family land where their rice is grown but I'm not sure how all that works. 
finding me here. I feel awkward in my large whiteness. My grandmotherhood does not sit easily with my adventurous spirit. How could I walk these delicate old feet up a coconut tree or ride on the back of a scooter up into the misty mountains? My reserve, the generations of conditioning reveal themselves. Layer after layer like heavy wool blankets weighing me down. But my spirit self laughs and dances my light self runs and shouts and cartwheels in delight with these colorful children, these beautiful women and handsome young men. So protective, so respectful, my gracious young traffic warriors. Participating here enlivens my spirit I want to dance with the color, laugh with the women making offerings, shout with the children. The gamelan music so foreign ripples through my body like overly carbonated cider, effervescent with life. I'm in that shared bubbling field. It's in me. The connecting. The connecting is important for me and for these families, these children. I have declared myself a global citizen. I have committed to Made, as I have committed to my sponsored child in Colombia and to the orphanage in India. I do not know where this soul will travel next, but I know we're all threads in this human fabric, a divine web of life, and that we are necessary for one another your well-being is mine and that of my grandbabies. May this glorious, beautiful, multicolored and complex fabric be stronger and better for my being here. So why couldn't I make these connections years ago? So full of personal desire, angst, ego. I needed this broken, empty heart the poignant wisdom of experience, loss, failure, a wide, open, spacious heart of knowing compassion. They are all our children. That child's well-being is my child's well-being. That child's hunger is a hole in my heart. I feel myself whole and complete by feeding him educating her, loving them tangibly, sending metta, prayer from the heart of compassion. What a joyous opportunity to participate in the love economy and raise up these new beings. Why else be here? Why else be at all? This is where I had to get to. The heart pours out like that sacred heart of Jesus in the classroom in Bogota 40 years ago. It repulsed me then, but now I feel it in my own chest. What is this? This wild dancing in my heart, my spine, blood, Amrita, breath, currents of life whirling in this grand old body, this magnificent container for transformation. Praise Source, <laughs> praise Love, be Love, be Gratitude. Thanks. Thank you. We're going to show you just a little bit of a video. I brought um, my little just camcorder with me on the trip and didn't think to bring a tripod. So it was kind of very much home movies, but 
Robert did a great job of editing out most of the movement, although we were having a little bit of technical stuff, so it might be a little jumpy, but it'll give you a flavor right now of our time with the kids. And I'd love to show a little bit the time that we did. Mm, oops, yeah.
Ernie's birthday. Ernie? Is it birthday? It's my okay. brother's birthday. <laughs> So I'm going to the writing. This is me and my friends. This is the Bali Banjar again. This is my family temple, my house, my kitchen. Yeah. Did you? You need to begin to need so she cut this out, not you. Did you cut this out? No, I think so. We can it in. My dog. So can you translate? Okay, what he said is he said, thank you very much for the help. Thank you for the clothes. And then I can hopefully I'll be able to graduate from school. Oh, good. I very much enjoyed being with them and, and uh, taking the pictures, thank him for that. Terima kasih banyak di jengkan dia mengizinkan dia ada foto dia senang sekali bisa ketemu sama adik-adik semua. We have very good pictures. Let's show more people. Jadi nanti get more sponsors. Kita foto hari ini kegiatan di sini nanti teman-teman dan mungkin aku ni adik itu juga bisa. Now I have some good news to tell you guys. Yeah. I just spoke with the people from uh, from the foundation in Yanyar. Yeah. And because of YKIP's efforts at what we're doing with the scholarship program, is they're going to they're going to put 500 to 700 kids on scholarship. Um, they're going the government because they're seeing what we're doing with 300 kids. Yeah. It's not that they're going to match it, but they were inspired and they got funding, so they're going to put give five to seven hundred kids scholarships. whatever Mucky Mucky was, was impressed with what was going on and said that he would find funds to sponsor another five to seven hundred children. And in that area, which is huge, I mean, it was like, wow, here we are, gets it around with scrapbooks and he's inspired and somehow came up with funds. <laughs> so that was pretty neat. Yeah. Uh, are there a large percentage of children who cannot afford it? There are a huge number of children who cannot since the bombings because tourist trade has fallen off, therefore their family income has fallen off, therefore many children don't have the wherewithal to purchase their uniforms and books, girl children especially, so that really got us revved. But we sponsor <laughs> boys too. <laughs> yes. Little brothers and mm -hmm. so forth. Anne has... Thanks, Nancy. CDs too, and hopefully she'll have better luck with it. I want to. Um, so, my friend, well, just a good can you, time to go to Can you just do it um, even though it's hot through, and sweaty, like, or when is there a better It's hot and sweaty and rainy, and there's a better time, but this is the time Heidi goes and sculpts, so it's the time we chose to go as a, a group. Um, Heidi goes for, oh, about six or seven weeks, usually um, about Thanksgiving to New Year or something like that. Um, and I'm told April's better, but we had fun. It was wet. It was really, really wet. So we, were, we were also up in the mountains more, so it wasn't unbearably humid, except to some of us. <laughs> Has anybody here been to Bali before? I just wanted to ask. Daniel, you have been also? So, feel free to chime in if you like. Is your mic on? I don't know. Robert, is my mic on? Robert? Oh, there yeah, there I come. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I think you said it right here. 
Okay. The next. Okay, thanks. This was, my, um, this was my third time to Bali, and um, I just wanted to give a little background about why I went this time and what inspired me to go back each time that I've been back. Um, I first went in 98 for Heidi's 50th birthday. She had her 50th birthday party there. And there were two or three things that really moved me when I went to Bali. Um, the first most tangible thing was that in the mornings, every morning, you would see women and men putting offerings of flowers and incense and saying prayers at their family altar at their, in their home. And the family altars are, each family temple has something that's called a God's chair. I'm not sure what the terminology is in, in Balinese, but this is a very large God's chair that's in uh, the temple. Uh, Puri Saraswati, where Margot and Aliyah and Nancy stayed last year. But there are smaller versions uh, and inside shops, like the little chair that's back there in the corner, which you can see afterwards. There are small chairs, there are also big chairs. And, and the thing that struck me about the chair is the chair is a, a symbol of, it's an invitation for the God to come, the presence to come and live in their family compound. So it's a, it makes a space for presence and source in their family and in their lives. And um, Bali is actually one of the, the only island among the more than 1,400 islands in the Indonesian archipelago that is Hindu. And they have a unique form of Hinduism that's a blend of, of uh, Buddhism and Hinduism, came from Java very much uh, infused with animism, and yet it is a monotheistic um, religion. And the, you, you may not be able to see it in here, but in gold at the very top is this little figure, which I have a little carving of here. This is their impish little god that they call Sanyang Widi Wasa. And this is the one god, um, and each, each of these little um, Mortis, they're called, represent the flame of Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. So the, the living spirit is very much um, what Balinese Hinduism is all about. And in their art, uh, there's very much an emphasis on what they call taksu, which is bringing or calling, inviting the actual living presence of spirit into, uh, to animate <coughs> Um, the masks that they use for ceremonial purposes, uh, the, the weaving and dyeing that they do, whatever their um, craft is, they call on the gods to uh, infuse what they're doing with living spirit. So that was very much a call um, and spoke to me very much in the way they live uh, with, it's not a separation, they live with their, uh, with their gods, their goddesses, and with their ancestors. Um, so there are a number of things that struck me and I thought would be interesting for people in Ashland who more and more I know are, are trying to and are living, finding our own individual ways of having spirit be part of our lives, of not being separated from it as many of us grew up with church being kind of a separate thing. So um, I wanted to start with that to just show you a magnificent God's chair. A lot of the things they do there are plated with gold. And here, here's a family making their morning offering on a very special day that we were there, Galungan, which is when a 10-day period when they call in their ancestors to come for a visit. <laughs> Oops, what am I doing here? So this is some of the, the beautiful art that's done there. And I just took a few slides here that we saw this year of people preparing offerings so that you could get a sense of the abundance. And this is our driver, Wayan, whom you saw earlier, and his family invited us for their family uh, temple to invite in the ancestors. So here they are with their offerings, a man making 
offerings. And so it inspired us, this is my husband Stanley, it inspired each of us in our own creative endeavors there. Um, I found a piano, Beth, another sponsor, was writing while she was there. Um, some more Balinese making offerings. And a fabulous temple with these just gorgeous parasols. Here's Mem Chinik, whom you probably met, an ancient dancer, and she's the inspiration for uh, the work that Heidi has been doing in Bali. I can't quite see it to stop it. So, And this is what I saw when I first went. Um, you know, women making offerings, men making offerings, and then, do you want to go to the next one? Her just complete absorption in what she's doing with her with her offerings that were on this special occasion of Galungan. The other um, thing I wanted to talk about was this Heidi Circle is about 30 sponsors now. And this was the ch these were the children looking at the book oops, that Heidi made of, of their experience with the photographing last year. They were really excited about um, everything to see themselves, you know, in a real, in a real book, and the whole camera experience. So this is in the back is a beautifully put together book that Heidi did for each of the sponsors that went, and also a book for the children as well. And whenever they got a chance during the day, they um, this is Heidi. Uh, they got a chance to look at the book. So one of the, the nice things is since she goes every year, each year she does a project with the kids, and that's largely what I'm going to talk about here is what the project was that we did with the kids this year. And you can go ahead. I just wanted to show the, um, these are the four of us that went this year, just like the four went last year. Go ahead. And that's another shot of Heidi and Beth. And this was Heidi and Stan going through the many, many presents that were sent over for the kids, trying to make sure that all the kids got some present. Because some of the sponsors, 10 of the 30 sponsors, have been over to see their children and, um, out, of, out of 30. And so some of the people who'd been there, like Aaliyah, Nancy, and Margot, sent over gifts for their kids. So we bought a bunch of little things that we could give the kids. And we spent a day sorting through all of these things to make sure every child had some, something. And my husband Stanley, whom some of you know. Go ahead. You can, you can just hit the green one now, I think. Okay. And it can just run. Is it going? Okay. So, what we did this year is, she, is we took the kids to the Bali Bird Park. Um, and this was a really new experience for all of them because, um, and I'm, I'm showing you now a series, I'm just going to let this, you can just let these run. These are the children, and Beth took some fabulous portrait shots up close of, of these kids so that you could really get a feel for them. Um, they had, as I said, they'd never been before. It's like $12, 12 American dollars for kids to get into the bird park, so none of them had gone, and none of them had been on a bus before. Um, most of them, when they got in air conditioning, were like this because they were so cold. And um, so, and the idea was to just give them an experience. And all the YKIP workers that were with us, that helped with translation, um, took photos, and we each had cameras. So we took pictures of the kids as the day uh, went along. And then a week later, we got together with them and created cards that they sent back to their sponsors. And you can see the cards in the back. So there, so you can see some of these children from the from last year's shots. This boy, um, and some of the children have now been in the in sponsored now for three years, and you can actually see a difference in in the the effect of good nutrition. That they seem to be healthier, the ones that have been in for longer, because the hundred and sixty five dollars that we send each year for each child um, pays for their snacks and their uh, uniforms and their books, as Margot already described. So 
um, there, and they, they really, uh, we haven't said anything about Ruchina, the woman that you saw translating last year. She is an expatriated American from uh, Indiana who went there as a dancer in 1970, married a Balinese man and stayed there. And she was very moved to get involved with this program after the Bali bombings when all uh, the tourism dried up and, and is pretty much nil there right now compared to when we were there in, in 2000. Um, and so we, she felt very moved to get involved when she read in the paper that there were 500 kids in her immediate area that were dropping out of school for want of uh, enough money to pay for fees and that sort of thing because many families have two, three, maybe four children and by the time <coughs> you add all that up, that's a lot of money for them. And so we were um, very amazed by this, this small amount of money um, how, what they did with it, you know, they were, they were very responsive to everything that was given. Um, I'll show you a little bit later in these shots. Um, this is a, a little boy, this is the little boy that we have just added and his sister who we've been sponsoring. So her little brother just came of school age, so we've decided to uh, sponsor him as well. And uh, as Stanley said, um, we pay more than that for coffee for a year, so uh, we felt it was well worth it and it, it, an opportunity to, to not only contribute but to really grow in this environment. So here's the beginning of the Bali Bird Park experience. The yep, there's your girl in the middle. <laughs> and here's Regina. And yeah, and she, uh, she is now the CEO of YKIP. And so once the monies that came into Bali uh, went for handling the um, the funding that was needed to help the actual victims and their families of the bombings, there have been two bombings in Bali now, you probably know, um, then the money, they began to get more sponsors that could help the kids who, like these children were showing you, whose uh, parents weren't able to afford to send them to school. I also think it's an amazing opportunity to to be involved in a very creative atmosphere. It's a very spiritual atmosphere and it's also uh, the, the Balinese people are amazingly creative and uh, we all found that being in that environment as as Heidi um, has demonstrated by going over every year, she creates new sculptures every year in her time there. So these were some of the wonderful birds. Some of them were caged. This was a man in the, in the Bali Bird Park who was painting eggs. So the really very high aesthetic uh, that the Balinese have uh, is seen in everything, which you can see in the displays that we have here. This was an area where birds were flying freely, so you had to go through a chain gate to get through there. And at first, the children were really shy. Um, by the second time we saw them um, making the cards, they were less shy, and then we also did some home visits uh, like they did last year, which I'll show you. And by the time we saw them for the third time, they had warmed up quite a bit. They were pretty terrified of these pelicans because they were high enough that Stan is six feet high and when he was holding Bishop like this, the pelicans were just, you know, taking him out of his hand, so. And they had snacks and, the, and this was a flight show that we had of the flying birds that they would, would send off and then they would come back. So there are several shots here that show the kids watching the flight. Beautiful parrots and so I brought the bird music to go with my presentation. <laughs> this was a wonderful owl. Another picture of Ruchina with YN in the background. Here's the whole group, along with the YKIP uh, translators. The group oh. expanded, as you can see, because they picked up more sponsors. Yeah. The and they had a chance to hold, hold birds, too. So there's a few here at the end. Oh, <laughs> 
a cassowary. <laughs> this is a good one of your gal. Yeah. So we've committed to going back this year. Um, the um, the father of the child, the children that we're supporting are is a carver and. Uh, when I went over, as I said, when I went over the first time, um, I was very taken with the God's chair. So when Stanley and I got married and went back for our honeymoon, Heidi gave us a God's chair, which we shipped back here um, uh, in a crate from Bali. And when it arrived, the back of it had broken. So uh, last year when she came back, we asked her to have someone carve us a new back. And it turned out to be the father of our child, which carved the new who carved the new back for us, and uh, we just installed that in our home in Talent. And so this, that was the father of our child. Which you'll, you'll see other pictures of him, it's all right. And here's, these are our two kids again on a little bridge rope crossing. <coughs> And then we took a break, brought the kids back to a museum where we sat and had lunch. And um, most of these kids had never seen, and this is all Balinese art, and uh, here they are looking at this book again. Um, but the children, we were amazed that these little kids were so fascinated by art. I mean, they just completely were absorbed in it, and most of them had never seen this before, at least not in a museum. So I just put in a few shots here where you could kind of see that. Here they are having lunch on the, this is outside the museum. We had snacks brought in for their lunch. They're going over that again. Hmm. There should be more on there besides that. Oh, it's going backwards. It's sometimes at the end of a file. Yeah, it should go right on to the next one. So while she's fixing that, I just wanted to say one of the other things that, um, that I responded to. As I've, each time I've gone back, I've gotten more, a deeper understanding as we've participated and been invited to participate in ceremonies there and be inside the temple, um, to have a more of an inside view of what actually goes on. And um, this, is, uh, this next section is showing you um, the day we got together and made cards out of the photos. Um, but I wanted to say, you see everywhere this black and white checkered cloth. Um, this is wrapped around their banyan trees. It's around their shrines and, and images of different gods. And it represents that the, the fact that the offerings are made to both the forces of good and the forces of evil and in a sense of being an equal offering to, for the well-being of all beings. And this little Sanyang Witty um, stands with his feet on, on the wheel, uh, holding a balance between the forces of good and evil. That's part of their cosmology, which is represented by the black and white cloth. So I, that was a... a very different approach than, than what Christianity has and um, that whole s sense of holding the duality, holding the tension of the duality and uh, finding a balance in that for the well-being of all beings. So it's kind of a Buddhist notion, I guess. So here's the kids uh, after we finished and we, you can see they each, many of them had, uh, they all had presents from their sponsors of one kind or another. and. Uh, Many people sent photos so their children, since their children had sent them photos of their families, um, the sponsors sent photos and, and gave them. So that's what the kids are holding there. This is Guru Putu, our, uh, the father of our children with Stanley and with his children. And this was Beth's little girl with her father. And this is going backwards again, I think. I think that was the last no, one in this. That's new. No, that's new? Yeah. Okay, go ahead and go. I spent one hour. Okay. All right. 
I'm just, uh, I'll finish up here with uh, the last little section, which is, um, or this, there's a section here of where Heidi, we, we tried to translate when the sponsors sent letters over to their children. We, um, we sat down with them and, and showed them what the sponsor had sent and read the letter and had it translated so that they really understood what was coming to them. So the, the, the section that follows this is on some site visits that we did. It'll just finish. Yeah, we're right there now. Okay. So this is um, my, uh, my cousin was sponsoring this little girl in the pink. And this is her family. So and, and Beth went to her family's house. These are a little bit out of order for whatever reason. There were just some beautiful shots that uh, I think that's one of Heidi's shots of the mother putting her arm around the, the little brother. Um, they lived in, and this little boy is one that my brother is sponsoring, and he hadn't been able to go to the bird park, so we went to see his family as well. But there is a, they are living, they do have housing. Uh, it's pretty basic. Uh, somewhere in here you will see the um, kitchen of, that one of the families had that's um, pretty much an outdoor kitchen. Everything's outdoors. Everything's outdoors, yes. And just to give you an example of um, of the uh, the way they they take something and run with it is, um, I had my cousin had just sponsored this little girl just before we left, um, and so she was new to the program. And I took some pictures over of my cousin and her husband. This is the kitchen I was talking about, and. Um, and by the time we got there a week later, they had framed their pictures and put them up on the veranda. And there was a picture I had given to my uh, little girl of Stanley and, and one of me. And they had already put my picture in their scrapbook and had a, had a boma drawn over it. A boma is, is like a protective figure with large fangs. <laughs> so I was glad I, I really knew what that uh, symbol was all about. So, so this is our visit to... Uh, to uh, Guru Putu's house with Made, our little girl, and Nyoman. This is the grandmother making offerings. <coughs> and this is her, their mother. <coughs> and Heidi there. So uh, this, I think we're just about finished here, if you just let it get right on through. There it is. Well, that's the picture we had given them from a year ago that they had put in. Yeah, so that's it. So that was our visit this year. I just wanted to say, um, if you're interested during the break, there's some uh, flyers here on YKIP and um, what the sponsorship is all about. It is tax deductible. If you'd like more information about it, I can tell you. And be sure you have a look at this book, which yes. is really a, a treat that Heidi put together. Very well done. Um, and there's, there are several other things back there which, which are, are of interest. So I'll just stand back there during the break if you have questions too. So I think we're taking a break now. Yes. Oh, Kadek, walk there. These are family temples. Oops. Yeah. He needs to go into the temple. Oh, here. she was just going. And now yeah. she's coming back. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there he is. He's got, he's got things to say to us now. Yeah. are beautiful what they're hanging down. Is that part of the temple celebration? Yeah, the ceremony. The ceremony? Yeah. It's really oh, nice. Oh yes, I would love to have your felt. Yeah, one is like this. <laughs> oh, they're kids? Yeah. Junior high? Yeah, junior. More rice fields. 
Someone asked earlier about yeah, to take rice. a look. There's the road. Many, that we many just rice came fields. From. And then this yeah. Yeah. is the view we have from our table. If it's not cemented down, it grows. <laughs> This was a park by the lake that we stopped at. It was exquisite. The colors are a little faded out, I feel. Ceremonies there. Oh. Yes. <laughs> One of the restaurants. This is where they see. This is where we were last night. They had shows there, and we'll show you here in a minute mm -hmm. at night time. It'll go into... Mm -hmm. Watching it crawl. It was so quiet. It was getting late. They were just crawl. 
very quiet. This thing was quite amazing. It would, it would fall down almost like a bird and then move back up. Banana. playing the music and and this one running the yeah, okay. barongs through the villages this one right here I was just gonna get, we'll get back to that this was only about six feet from our bedroom Aliyah in our bedroom window and it was our alarm clock and it that I was getting him at six o'clock in the morning he was I snuck out and videoed him now this is just right across from where we were staying and that's where you saw the dancers that night. The stage, the beautiful trees. It was another one. There was just a little pathway, and we could go walk right into it. I did have set it as a head of time, so that we stayed in Puri Saraswati, which is um, like a little compound in itself. This is and the room. wife of one of the princes of Ubud was really our hostess. And then we had this lotus pond and the temple next door and a restaurant right there. I mean, it was really the high life and, and a driver. So it, it was so easy to be there. It's mm -hmm. a very different culture, but having it set up like that made it very easy for us. In our room, Ali and I's room, we shared the cost of $50 a night. And dinner would be like a good, you know, very good dinner at $10 a night. It's great. This was behind, you saw the big door um, of where the pond was, and the big door at the top. This is what was behind, or there for what was what was behind. Yeah, I judge big eyes. Some wild cats. And this was completely a, a pond last night. So we had a flood river, and this whole water, this whole street was just gushing water. I wish I had my camera stranded over there and had to take our shoes off and wade through here to get back to our hotel room last night. Doing that good here. Now 
same scene a little bit later. Let me see, I'm under an umbrella. <laughs> We're going to go back. This is a little bit the pool where we stay. Just about. But it would be about, yeah, and it would come down pretty hard. But this December is sort of the beginning of the rain season. It goes on until about March. But we were there this year, and we went, or when we went in November, December. We didn't have any rain until the very end when we left mid-December. So it really changes from there. There he is again. <laughs> he would grow. Sometimes it's starting at 4 in the morning. Oh, cool. <laughs> Always on that spot, I do. Yeah. I liked it. Okay. Oh, there's our mango lassies. Yeah. You get to enjoy the view here that we're looking at. Looks like Andes. Yeah, Andes, I think. Last time he was here, it was kind of getting dark and a little rainy, so we wanted to come back in the lunchtime. Less than an hour. We're getting our that was at the daily that was the beginning of the meal. This is now the end of the meal. <laughs> well, I was sweating a half hour ago. It's actually comfortable now. It's somewhat cool, actually. Yay! <laughs> It was actually not unbearable, but you know, not what we're used to. I think he was <laughs> thought he'd have fun rubber. <laughs> he calls in the next scene. <laughs> he was so proud. I would love and, and actually bring a tripod and a good camera. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Is he putting offerings up? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Every day. And then monkeys eating or something. Monkeys, the cats, the, the cat that you saw, the roosters, but the, and they don't mind. That usually has a little rice in amongst the 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 birds. Mm -hmm. This was right where we were sleeping. Incense represents um, Brahma, the, the creative, the fire energy, and the holy water is for Vishnu, the preserver, and the flowers that they spray the holy water with represent Shiva, the destroyer. I grew up with him. He always lived. This is a traveling Buddha that uh, Tessa makes in his in his little shop. All stay at Arma, but tomorrow. Uh, so this, is, this is at Maryland's. This is her home, the one that um, had the teeth filing. And her home ended at where the pool was, pretty much. It went right down, but her whole view was this of some the rice fields. What was wonderful about this particular day is there were several priests in attendance doing the ceremony, and also. Um, one of the persons who does the puppets, the silhouette made out of blood.
get it low. All this was created just for this evening. They're walking, so I think they're probably a little weary. Sense a, a little taste of what 
some of the people see and then in some that you don't get to see normally. Thanks to Heidi, we got NYN's family and all that. We got to see quite a bit. And there was a lot more that I didn't <coughs> put in because it, I think we may put something together just to remember. But this is more of a get a feel. So I would love to, uh, for a few minutes more, let everyone stand up again. And anybody have any questions for us? Any more? And we've got the mic. I, I know you've been asking <clears throat> during the break and so forth, but appreciate I know I don't want to keep you too much later with a cold night. But um, great. Go ahead. Feel free to look through the table a little bit more. Pick up a brochure. Yeah, I'll take a white kit flyer if you didn't get one, and you may be inspired some point down the ro the road. It's just a nice way if you go to you know to have some deeper way of participating than just being a tourist. You know, to really get to meet the people. On that large procession, how many tourists were there to observe it? Three of us. That's it. There weren't. There are not very many tourists there right now because of the bombings. They're just, you know, there's really compared to when Stan and I went in 2000. There were just very, very few Westerners. Even the Australians, you know, are not, uh, not coming as they usually do. It's really hurting. Yeah. We yeah. saw we saw a few at various restaurants in Ubu, but like with that procession, I think I saw one other Caucasian guy. I don't, I don't know that there were weren't too many. It yeah. was for them, obviously. Yeah, all the dancing and all of the, all the, when you see temple dancing, some of it's done for tourists and some of it's done just for the temple. So you really get a different feel for it when you get inside the temple and really participate in the ceremonies. We went to, uh, you know, you asked the question about what, the, what it was about. I think it's um, each of those ceremonies, there's so much in depth about what they're about. But, this year we went to a, a temple ceremony where they were doing a, a cleansing on the temple where they planted five different elements underneath the, the cornerstone of the temple and there were 2,000 people there and two gamelan bands and, um, and there were the four of us that were there and there were t uh, two Germans were the only others that we saw there and uh, it was just, it was for them, it was, it was their ceremony and it was something that they do once every hundred years to to clear the energy in their temple. And they had all kinds of offerings. They had secret dances that the old, old ladies did. Um, there were an amazing amount of offerings. And uh, it's just a, it's an amazing culture. The whole economy of the culture really always ran off the, the, the religious ceremonies. That's basically how they self-supported over the years. And then tourism came in. And so, um, the interesting, an interesting piece for me was that the Dutch had colonized Bali in the early 1900s and when they left, they set up the legal system so that um, only Balinese can own land in Bali. So you can lease land from a Balinese person, but it leaves the land to the Balinese, yeah. which was really, I think, really made a huge difference and kept, kept their culture more intact than than most any you can see in the world. It's so interesting to me that they live, all of the spiritual and religious aspect is, it's from the inside out mm -hmm. rather than the outside in. And my feeling about being in the temple with the people and so included, as long as we were respectful and wore our temple garb and were very respectful of the way they did things. We were just included, including in the procession. We're processing along with everybody right. else. And it was like. We had to wear this amazing. kind of outfit to be in their temple, what we're wearing tonight. So we were delighted. Oh, yes, of course. We'll dress up. <laughs> and I think the depth of the, of the spiritual practices, the children pick up on all that. And some of the things these kids wrote on the cards they sent to their sponsors when they were translated were just really amazing. The, 
you know, the amount of responsibility that they, set, you know, that they have, the amount of love that they have for the rest of their family, and all of that is just, you know, well, the, the amazing. little babies um, are, they have a tradition where the first three months they do not have a name, and they're not put down on the ground. They're either on the bed or in their arms, and that's it. You know, um, they're not, and so they have this beautiful ceremony at three months. I guess. Did you see one of yeah, those? Yeah, we went yeah. to that this year. We saw a baby first, first baby steps on the ground. You know, it was, it was an amazing so the, and you, ceremony. You know, grandparents are usually the ones you are, if they're too little to really be walking, they're being held. Um, you don't see any. Unfortunately, you see them kind of. Uh, in the back or in their seats <laughs> in the motorcycles, but they, they don't seem to have the accidents yeah. that you would think they would. No. And They're you don't really hear much crying, you know. No. I mean, uh, uh, you don't hear many babies crying. And there are just a lot of kids, but it's very rare. They're just, uh, they just seem to be very much at peace and close to nature, and I think that's really mm -hmm. a lot of it. At night that we saw the Barong, you know, all the kids were out front. We were waiting for quite a while. I mean, it was maybe 10 o'clock before it started. And they were just so quiet, and they were playing. I mean, they were having fun, but they were just quiet and just very, uh, for that many kids, they, there wasn't any screaming or crying or biting or anything. It was just very peaceful, as well as the people, you know, yeah. the adults. Was, yeah. I mean, they're, they have their challenges, but it's a very honoring culture. Mm -hmm. So I think I appreciate Respect. you guys staying. Yeah. Well, blessings thank and thank you for coming. RVML Resource Center is a volunteer-operated federal 501c3 tax-exempt nonprofit organization. RVML is dedicated to providing easy access to a comprehensive collection of information on a variety of metaphysical, spiritual, and personal development subjects. RVML accepts and appreciates all donations. Material and monetary contributions are fully tax-deductible. This recording is not copyrighted and permission is granted to broadcast, exhibit, or duplicate all or part of this program for non-commercial educational purposes. This live presentation was organized and presented by the Rogue Valley Metaphysical Library and Event Center. For more information, please visit rvml.org.